Today we're at the kitchen in downtown Bakersfield and we're cooking up something light, something tasty, something refreshing, especially with this heat. And I'm joined now here with Chef Richard and Dylan, and I'm gonna introduce them both to you. Now, Chef Richard, give us a little bit about the history of this place and also your history being a chef as well. Well, we took over this spot a few years ago, about, about three years ago, and uh, it was already a teaching kitchen. And we decided to just continue on with that, but also add our own uh, elements, uh, incorporating um, wine education and also uh, doing uh, events with other uh, local uh, producers. And uh, one thing we highlight is a thing we call Meet Your Grower. So it could be uh, from produce to livestock to beer and wine. So anything that's locally uh, uh, produced, we want to also collaborate and be able to uh, cross promote each other. And then, to, and then this town being such a community driven uh, city that it, it kind of fits right in. And, and as for myself, I am uh, born and raised in LA, um, but I, I moved here uh, to open up a restaurant and then uh, from there segue to over here and I've been a chef now for about 22 years. Oh wow, that's a long time. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. And I'm here with Dylan from the Edible Schoolyard. Dylan, thank you so much for being here. Now, I'm not really familiar with the Edible Schoolyard, and so for other people that are not as well, can you kind of introduce them to what that is? Of course, this is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, the Edible Schoolyard Kern County is a program of the Grimm Family Education Foundation. It was founded in 2010 by Barbara Grimm Marshall, and the Edible Schoolyard Kern County is a program that teaches teaches the students of our community and our entire county to have a positive relationship with food and we do that through experiential learning in our garden and our kitchen classrooms um, that we have spread out across the, across the community but it's really to get students to really have a positive interaction with the food they eat every day. That's exciting and you're actually from Bakersfield correct? I am. I was born and raised in Bakersfield um, my entire life. I, I actually started with Edible Schoolyard uh, when I was in college at Cal State Bakersfield and, um, it progressed and I stayed around for, for a while and now I'm the program manager there. So, What does it feel like doing that role, kind of giving back to your community? How does that feel, especially in a time like now when people, I mean food became such a big thing. We saw grocery stores empty out, a lot of people are cooking at home. What is it like for you at this time in your role? It is. It, it, it kind of gets emotional for me because with our program, what we've done um, amidst COVID is we've transformed our gardens into small farms and those farms now are providing food for the community to address food insecurity. So uh, one of our biggest partners is Cal State Bakersfield um, and their food pantry and having come from having been a student and and having lived you know am amongst all of the all of my peers at Cal State it's really good to know that we can give back to the students of our community give back to the people that are hungry in our community and really further the growth of addressing food insecurity in our in our region is food insecurity a problem here in Kern County it is it's a major problem um, I I don't have the immediate numbers off the top of my head but it is a it is a huge problem in our community and um, you know throughout the entire community and then um, Cal State and the students there also are affected by it as well. So it is, it's very satisfying going back to everything. It's really satisfying to be able to give back to the community that I was raised in and, and hopefully soon we can continue to get back to our regular programming where we get to work with the K through six students and uh, teach them all about food. Yes, I know, we're all missing that interaction right now, but coming up in just a little bit, we are going to be making a beautiful and delicious salad here with Dylan and Chef Richard, so stay with us. We're back here at the kitchen today, and I am no chef. I'm not going to act like one, so I'm gonna let the experts take over. I'm here with Chef Richard from the kitchen and Dylan from Edible Schoolyard. And so Dylan, we're actually gonna be cooking with some of the olive oil that you guys brought. Can you tell everyone a little bit about that olive oil? The Buena Vista Extra Virgin Olive Oil is an olive oil that we produce at the Buena Vista Edible Schoolyard. Um, it's a organic olive oil. It's delicious. I use this at home. It is my favorite olive oil in the world. Of course, I'm partial, but it's delicious. <laughs> um, you can find it at Lassen's 
it's on the shelf there. Um, I encourage everybody to go in and buy buy some of our olive oil. All of the proceeds um, when you purchase a bottle of Buena Vista extra virgin olive oil comes back to the Edible Sclera Kern County program. So you buy a bottle, you're supporting edible education in Kern County. All right, and now we're going to be making a fennel salad. So Chef Richard, we're going to hand, hand the reins off to you. Like I said, I am no chef, but break everything down for us so people at home know exactly how to make this salad. Uh, so I have here a shallot, which is like uh, the bougie cousin of an onion. It's a little bit more milder in uh, flavor, and uh, it, it lends itself great to sauces without it being too overpowering. Okay. And so here it's nice and fresh. And so here I'm going to um, cut it ver uh, perpendicular to the cutting board. And I, I didn't cut off the root of the, the shallot, so then all the layers stay, stay together. Then I'm gonna go ahead and make these vertical cuts. And then I'm gonna cut it this way, and then voila, we have little tiny dice of shallot. I'm gonna put in about a half a teaspoon of a Dijon mustard. The Dijon mustard will uh, not only add flavor, but then it will also serve in as emulsifier for the dressing as well. And I'm gonna drizzle in probably about a teaspoon of honey to counterbalance, as I mentioned, to counterbalance the acidity of the, of the lemon juice. And then of course, a couple uh, hefty pinches of salt and some cranks of fresh cracked pepper. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna juice these lemons. Uh, before you juice a lemon, you always wanna be sure to roll it. Kind of break up the pulp a bit so that all that juice, you can maximize the amount of juice that comes out of it. The one-to-one -one ratio per usual. I just love the acidity. I love the brightness of it. And also a little bit of a history in the connection between the Edible Schoolyard and the kitchen. The, the person who uh, actually opened this place up was the original kitchen manager of the Edible Schoolyard, Darcy Atkinson. So uh, she has since retired and, and my partner Jeremy Brown and I were able to take over. And so here I, got, I was able to get a half a cup. I'm gonna go ahead and mix it in with the rest of this, with the shallots and the Dijon, salt, pepper, and the zest. I'm gonna whisk that up. As you can see, I have not put in the olive oil yet. That goes in last. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it in half. And over here you'll see that there is a, a solid um, core, which I'm going to remove by, as you can see, it's like a triangle. I'm gonna go cut that out. That way all the layers of the fennel can properly separate. I'll go ahead and then put, mix it up with the, with the baby greens. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these plums. I mean, pluots, I mean. So like can see now, now it's got that lovely vibrant red color. Now I'm gonna go ahead and mix in the, the dressing. Vinaigrette you made, Richard, would you say that that's something you could make in a little bit more of a quantity and hold over a couple of days? Yes, absolutely, great question. Uh, this vinaigrette should last about a week. Add some uh, toasted pistachios for some crunch. We Hopefully it looks like this when I go home. Salad. <laughs> <laughs> and so there we have it. Perfect. A shaved fennel salad uh, with late summer uh, pluots, uh, baby greens, uh, sh uh, shaved parmesan, toasted pistachios, and of course, a dr extra drizzle of that uh, Buena Vista olive oil. Well, now that the room has gone completely silent because <laughs> we're so enjoying this salad so much, that's gonna do it for us on Brunching with Belle. We will have this full recipe on our website, turn to 23com and of course, we will have the olive oil on our website as well so you guys know exactly where to get it. But that'll do it for us for Brunching with Belle this Sunday. We'll see you next time.